Hi and welcome back to Classbox writing automated Java tests. Uh, let's have a quick recap on what we've already covered. Uh, we have covered a lot in these uh, video tutorials. Uh, we covered writing web driver tests uh, using JUnit. Uh, we covered methods to help better write tests such as the abstraction of the driver and mechanics and advantages of using page objects. Uh, so today we're going to take it a little bit further and we're going to have a look at test suits. We're going to look at what test suits are. Uh, we're going to write a test suit and I'm going to discuss why we should use test suits uh, where possible. Right, let's begin. A test suit is basically a collection of tests which we can run at the same time. Uh, for instance, we, if we were to have, uh, let's just say, about a hundred different tests, uh, some of which were based around um, the about page, so if I quickly uh, fired up the web app, so if we had a couple of tests around uh, the about page or, or maybe others around uh, the uh, contact page for instance uh, etc or maybe even taking a more uh, specific look at uh, the type of tests so for instance we could have tests around um, filling and submitting data um, others might be around um, page navigations, etc. The nuts and bolts of this is that we may have tests for very different categories, uh, some of which may cross over. Uh, for example, if you wrote a test for filling in the contact message form, it can come under multiple categories. Uh, for example, it can come under um, tests which are related to the contact page, it could come under tests which is related to filling in forms, it could relate to tests which are around um, data submissions. So typically if you only have a couple of tests it's not really a bit typical of a problem, you can just um, run each and every single one of your tests individually. But when we have many many tests, so if we have in, in our example a hundred different tests, then it would be very inefficient to run each and every single test uh, singly or individually. Uh, it would also be a big problem if we tried to cherry pick uh, different types of test because what that promotes is someone's manual time and as far as writing tests go we should try and remove as much ma manual time as possible and at the same time try and make it easier for someone to be able to run multiple different tests with very little effort. So how do we do this? How do we run various different tests uh, through very little effort? And this is where test suits come in. So taking into account everything we've just talked about, a test suit is almost like saying we are going to write a list which will run uh, a number of tests with bullet point in the list and then we can just run the list. So by writing a list and running the list. So when I say list I'm actually referring to a test suit now. We would now run all the tests identified in the list. So I hope everything I've made, uh, said so far makes sense. Uh, so enough theory. Uh, let's actually have a look now. So what we're going to do is quickly take a look at all our tests. So I've just written a couple of um, skeleton tests which don't really do anything. So I'll just open them up. I don't have anything else in here. Uh, this project you can ignore it. So we have um, an abstract test uh, which uh, which has a before method and an after method and all they do is they just print out uh, the fact that this before method and this abstract method has been called. Well, we have three different tests. So in this test, again, a before, an after and the actual test. There's actually no test in here. There's, there's nothing in here other than just a print statement. Just to keep this uh, video more specific to the point of writing a test suit. And similarly, we've got two other tests, one which is around the contact message, uh, same setup, and uh, a login service, again, same setup. So if you were to run these tests, we would have to say, go in a specific test, for instance this one, uh, and then go run as JNet tests. 
uh, and it then runs the test and it prints out the fact that the abstract before run first and then the login before then the actual test in the login test uh, and then the login test after method and then the abstract after method uh, but in this case, like I said, there's only three different tests, so it's easy to run. But if you want to run them all, uh, especially if you had many, many tests, how can you run them all? And the answer to do this is via test suit. So what we're going to do is we're actually uh, going to write a test suit now to help us run all these tests in one go. Right, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to write a test suit now. So I'm just going to create a new Java class. Uh, I'm going to put it in a different package called um, uh, test suit uh, test suits and I'm going to name it all uh, test suit uh, to me the naming of a test suit is very important because it helps me identify what's inside the test suit uh, so in this instance all test suit is a very um, uh, common sensely will be designed to run every single test in this uh, test framework. So just finish that off. Right. So to run a test suit, what we will do is basically run this class to be the uh, the test class. But we need to mark this test uh, class with a few annotation that JNet provides us with to help it run as part of various tests. So we're going to run mark it with the uh, the run with annotation and give it the suit class. So what this means is we're saying run this class with JNS tests uh, with JNSM suit class. We now need to actually tell it which test classes to run as part of the suit. And this is how you do that. We're saying uh, at annotation suit dot suit classes uh, open braces open curly braces and then close curly braces uh, close braces and in here we can actually give it the classes i.e. our test classes that we can pass to it so if we just do that class what we've done now is we've basically said when you run this class because this is marked as a suit dot class what we're effectively telling JUnit to do is to run any test classes we have inside this suit dot suit classes annotation so if we now add in our remaining uh, test classes What we're doing now is we're quite literally saying, when you run, when you run this class as a JNet test, run the following test classes. So, let's give that a go and see what happens. So let's just save it really quickly. Right click, run as JNet test. Okay. So what's happened is it's printed out all of these statements uh, because that's what I've uh, marked the uh, the before and after methods in each test to do, and it's basically said um, so it's printed out the abstract before and then the adoption test before adoption test itself, the object from test after, and then the abstract after, and it's done the same for the other two tests as well: contact message test and login test. If we have a look at the actual tests we can see that it's actually also run uh, each test. Uh, now the amount of time is almost next to nothing because there is no data in our tests. I've just done a skeleton for them just to showcase what we can do here. Uh, but this is really really powerful in that if we had many tests all we do is just run this and, and that would do it. Another way to actually generate this test suit, uh, a much much easier way is to basically um, and many IDEs provide this uh, 
so other IDEs which allow you to write um, Java application and Java testing frameworks do provide this uh, functionality. What you can do is simply right click on the package and then just go run as unit test and that will also run all your tests uh, which is very convenient. You can also actually create this entire test suit class on the fly uh, quite simply by again right clicking on the package go into new go into other uh, fishing for Java uh, and then JUnit test suit clicking next giving it a name so uh, I'll call this all tests uh, let's just just so we can differentiate it every test you have in your test framework will actually appear here and you can pick whichever ones you want so I'm just going to uh, take these two just so we can differentiate I'm gonna give it a different name I'm gonna call it something like uh, uh, small service test suit finish that uh, okay I didn't actually give the right package um, I should have done that but if you have a look now um, they're the same in that uh, both uh, classes are almost identical in the way they're structured uh, the only thing that's missing is the other test which is available in this class so if you run this run as chain of test so it's done the adoption test and the contact message test and if you have a look uh, we can confirm they certainly done those so what's happened here is Eclipse in this instance has provided us with the ability to create the test test ourselves uh, the reason I actually took the uh, the long approach the long way of explaining things as opposed to just right clicking was because I actually wanted to show how you would write one yourself because not every IDE would provide us with such uh, magical powers and I feel it's better that we know exactly what is involved if we want to write a test suit also it's important that we know how to write a test suit because in this instance we've got an IDE so we've got to use an interface that allows us to just right click on something and, and run everything uh, as a test quite conveniently but on various environments say like a Linux environment uh, or even a Unix environment something that's uh, command line uh, driven we can't just right click on something we need to be able to uh, fish for a, a class and run it that way um, yes we can still run individual class if you want to but the point here is to minimize the effort required to run multiple tests so if we had a test suit we would be able to run it against any environment we want and therefore I think it's just it's just my own opinion but I think it's just important we know how to write one of these as opposed to get something to magically generate it for us uh, purely because if you really wanna do heavy testing especially on environments where we have no uh, available UI interface it's just something that's important to know um, but otherwise almost everything's provided for us which is uh, uh, well it's pretty good and that's it folks uh, if you enjoy my videos then please subscribe if you have any questions then please leave a comment below until next time ciao